live from Orlando, Florida, it's theCUBE. Covering ServiceNow, Knowledge17. Brought to you by ServiceNow. We're back, Dave Vellante with Jeff Frick. This is theCUBE, we're live from Orlando, ServiceNow, Knowledge17, our fifth knowledge, Jeff. Abhijit Mitra is here, he's the general manager of the customer service management business unit at ServiceNow. Great to see you. Good to see you too. Loved your keynote uh, this morning. Thank you. A lot of energy, you know, CJ introduced you as enthusiastic as today as you were 20 years ago when, <laughs> when he met you. Yeah, he said it's even more enthusiastic. He <laughs> jumped <laughs> off the stage. Well, you got a good reason Must to be. Must be the solution. You know, <laughs> business is good, you guys are rocking, you got a hot new business unit that you're managing. That's true. Um, you started off your conversation with essentially saying, customer service is broken. I mean, you had us all raise our hands. And who's ever had a bad customer service experience? Every hand went up in the audience. Explain that a little bit, what's broken? So the thing is that, you know, when you think about customer service today, um, companies spend a lot of time and effort on customer service, but uh, not necessarily the end customers are seeing the result of that. And, uh, you know, when you talk to customers, I talk to a lot of customers asking them, like, why is this happening for you? Um, what they're telling us is that, look, all the solutions that are available in the market today are um, solutions really based on CRM systems, and uh, these are very well suited for allowing customers to contact through a multitude of channels, we call it omnichannel engagement, and then for support uh, agents to log their issues as cases, but they don't do anything more. And as consumers, as customers, we are looking for solutions, and as customer service uh, uh, departments, uh, you know, uh, customer service agents want to fix customer issues. So that is really where the problem is. So the issues don't get fixed and customers keep on calling again and again and again. That's how case volume keeps but, on going. But they up. always ask you at the end, are you satisfied with your service and will you hang on for the survey and give me a five, please? That's, that's the part that amazes me. No, you solve none of the problems that I asked you Gaming the NPS. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so how are you attacking this problem? So the way we are attacking this problem is, um, and again, this is something that I didn't invent. Um, it's something which I, I learned, actually, um, again, after talking to a lot of uh, customers after joining ServiceNow. What they told us is that they were looking for a service management approach, and really the benefit of the service management approach is that it makes customer service a team sport. Because now, not just customer service, but every other department, whether it's engineering or operations or finance or legal or sales, can come together on a common platform, and the you know, root cause of customer issues are then assigned as tasks across the enterprise. And once these root causes are fixed, then the issues are permanently resolved. And that reduces case volume, and that also increases customer satisfaction. You mentioned CRM-based tools, people trying to use CRM-based tools for customer service management, which essentially logs something, yeah. logs a customer service issue but doesn't give you the whole workflow. What's the difference? Give us the, you know, you know CRM. Um, why not CRM, why service now? Yeah, like I said, it closes the end-to-end -end loop. Um, so just give me an example, uh, let's give you an example, is that um, in ServiceNow, when customer has issues, um, these are logged as cases. And now, um, the customer support agent may be able to give a quick um, relief to the customer and close the case. And that's what you do in every other CRM system as well, and you do the same thing in ServiceNow. However, closing the case is not necessarily the be all and end all, because the root cause of this customer's issues may still be there. And that's how you assign these as problems uh, to other departments. Um, so that's really the fundamental difference. Um, there is a follow-up process that's happening. A follow-up process may not be just problem, it may be also uh, require a change in knowledge, it may require um, a technician to go on-site through integrated field service. So basically we close the loop. We allow companies to close the loop. So it's end-to-end -end customer service. So I'm just curious, uh, when you're out in the field talking to customers that are doing this, you know, how receptive is kind of that next level of uh, people and, and departments in terms of now being pulled more directly into a customer sports role through you know, taking the service uh, approach? 
Is it, are they happy, is this new, is it just a different way to execute what was inefficiently being done before? Because they don't, you know, I'm not in customer service, I'm in, <laughs> I'm in the whatever department I'm in. Now you're asking me to help you resolve it because I'm part of the root cause. So, um, underlying this is the philosophy that everybody in the company is responsible for customer service. And companies who do well is business actually enforce that philosophy uh, in their uh, different departments. And um, it is such companies who either uh, have aspirations to transform themselves or who are already uh, along, along this way uh, that actually have an affinity towards the service management approach. Now in terms of the people who are actually working in the different departments, it's not that they are um, not working on their own systems anymore. Yes, those systems are there and, you know, for example, engineering will work in Jira, I mean, there's nothing stopping them from doing that. But what is interesting here is that the work is getting assigned to them from customer service in the service management system of customer service management. Right? That's really what it is, and that increases visibility. It's all about, uh, it's all about visibility and, uh, and, and reporting and analytics. So that really shows that, okay, here, here are where the issues are, and once you see the benefit of your impact on customer satisfaction, on net promoter scores, on revenues, then it becomes very, very compelling. Abhijit, uh, you guys don't break out the revenues of your customer service management business unit, I understand that, uh, but it's a real business unit, it's growing, you've got real customers, you showed some logos today, so what can you tell us about the business, the business momentum, any proof points that you're seeing with customers? Well, um, we've been in the um, market for a little more than a year now. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say a year, because we just launched at this event right. last year. Yep. And in the last year, um, one year, we've seen customers from all over the world adopt our solution, all over the world. We have customers now in 28 countries, um, over 10 uh, you know, big industry categories, and uh, many of our customers, are early adopters, who've been live with the system for a while, they were here, they are here, at this conference, there are 18 of our customers who are here. Um, they're speaking in their own sessions and they're sharing their experience with other customers. So it's been a tremendous um, adoption of the solution uh, so far. Okay, and how about the impacts that you've seen on their business? Can you share any you know, results? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, some of our customers, uh, without naming names, um, have had uh, up to 70% reduction in case volume. Uh, just because of self-service and case deflection. Um, another customer had a 40% improvement in their promoter scores. I mean, these are unbelievable statistics. Um, and uh, a third replaced uh, 50 different uh, customer service portals and 15 CRM systems with ServiceNOS customer service management. Um, so these are just you know, unbelievable results that, uh, that our customers have achieved in the last one year. You call them uh, light speed Pioneers. That's right. You know, that's a term you guys are using, light speed. That's but, right. But but so, you know, your customers aren't saying, hey, calling you about, ah, Majid, I need to move at light speed. What are they saying that you guys have, of course, translated into that rubric of light speed? It's really about business transformation. So most of the, um, you know, our, uh, many of our customers, I would say, are looking for a better way to run customer service. Um, you know, um, they have challenges in either in improving customer satisfaction, um, you know, their customers are telling them that your, your service is very disconnected, um, your SLAs are not being met. Um, so either it's mostly that, or in reducing cost because they have too many different systems, um, different business units who do work in different ways. So it's about standardization, it's about increasing efficiency, do it, uh, do more with less, uh, automate more, and it's also about uh, effectivity. So when you, you know, complete the work, you complete it well, it's done. Yeah, so being able to reduce volumes like that um, is impressive, especially given the amount of data that we have, the amount of complexity that there is uh, out, out in the world today. You know, we hear a lot of talk at these conferences about IOT. You know, that's going to create more data, more devices, more problems for customers. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on IOT and the impacts that it has on, on customer service? I think IOT is going to force customer service to be proactive. Um, and to some extent, IoT is an opportunity to be proactive because now you have access to data that you never had before. Now you uh, can analyze that data in real time, uh, you can find out any anomalies, 
and uh, you know for which you may need to Ladies take an action and, and uh, if you can now, if you predict an the outage the then you can essentially take action to avoid that right so iot opens up totally new opportunities for customer service to be proactive now once again. Right. Okay, so Expo we're live. They're shutting us down <laughs> here. And, uh, As always, we shut down the Expo <laughs> Hall. It's kind of a cube tradition. <laughs> <There> we <go. laughs> we're going to go way after. The lights will be out. Yes. We'll still be going. And the forklifts um, will be driving in. <laughs> so we heard a lot today about Jakarta. Uh, yeah. CJ was explaining uh, sort of the, the process that you guys use. Starts with the customer. You guys try to understand what the needs are and it comes back through the business units into the platform and then you That's guys right. take it back and we apply it. Um, what are some of the things in Jakarta that you are going to be applying in, in your future releases and your, for your customers? So one of the things that I'm very excited about Jakarta is our, uh, our communities uh, product. Uh, this is something that we are announced, we announced today, we are releasing in Jakarta. Now with communities, um, it, it increases um, you know, the level of engagement that customers have with companies because it allows the companies to provide a totally personalized experience. Um, I mean, think about it, in your own personal lives, um, when you look for help, you, you turn to people who you trust the most, right? Your friends and your family. Um, similarly, as customers, they would like to turn to people who they trust, which is like other customers like them, right? Okay. So that's why communities is a big step for us, essentially, in uh, giving that features to our customers to have a better experience for their So how customers. will that work? Uh, the, the, it's, a, it's a feature within the, the platform, um, your customers will then create communities and cultivate communities. Yeah, essentially, it's a it's a it's a new product, and you just you just turn it on, and uh, and and then uh, you you administer the community, you moderate the community, you 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 roll it out. So our customers would use it to create their own communities for their customers. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's how it would work. What are some of the objectives you have um, for the business unit? What, what are some of the things we should be watching as observers in terms of you know, indications of success, momentum? Really there is only one goal, which is for our customers to be our most outspoken um, references. That's really the only goal that I have um, for this business unit. And, uh, 18 of them are here today. They they are uh, they are speaking on our behalf, and and I hope to see many many more of them uh, in this conference next year. Customer satisfaction, as they say, is one thing. Customer loyalty is everything. So obviously in thank, public, thanks <laughs> in public. Right. Thanks very much for coming to the cube and congratulations on the, the success you've had. Thank you very much. You're thank welcome. You for having All me. All right, keep it right there, buddy. We're back with our next guest before the lights go out. <laughs> <It's> ServiceNow <laughs> knowledge. This is the cube. Right back. <laughs>